Hello there. If you want to learn how to write a great and compelling statement of purpose, why don't you keep watching? First of all, please like this video. It helps me. It helps um, my content grow and subscribe if you have not subscribed. Um, also, leave a comment to say, hey, what's up, Anne? And I will be sure to respond. All right, keep watching, bring out your pen and papers, and let's get learning. What is the point of a statement of purpose? Like, why the heck is that even necessary? Why? Okay, here's why it's necessary. So a statement of purpose defines your motivations, your skills, and your career goals. It tells the graduate admissions committee, hey, this is what I'm interested in. This is what I can do. This is why you should admit me. This is why I'm important to you. Um, this is what I want to do in five years and in 10 years from now. How to write a statement of purpose. How to write a statement of purpose. This is, this is interesting. So let me give you some background about my qualifications and why you should trust what I say. So I was the graduate coordinator for my department um, as a professor for one year, like one and a half years. And so every admission decision that we made for graduate school went through me, like had to sign off. And I have served on the graduate committee for my department for several years. And, um, and so, yeah, so I have a very good idea of what your statement of purpose should read like, should sound like. And many of my colleagues would agree that your statement of purpose is very integral to whether or not you get admitted into graduate school. So your statement of purpose should generally have five paragraphs. You do not want to write too long, right? Because I personally do not read long statement of purposes. I don't. And you don't need to. Like, you don't need to write too... You don't need to make it too long. There's no point. The statement of purpose must capture the reader um, for at least five minutes. Um, so you want to make sure that those first five minutes, when I pick up your statement of purpose, it's short, it's concise, it's strong, it's well written, and it conveys the message. The first paragraph of your statement of purpose should um, introduce who you are, okay? So when I start reading any statement of purpose, right, I want to say, hmm, who is this person? Obviously, I have your CV, I have your um, your transcripts, right? I have all that stuff. But your statement of purpose is kind of a semi-informal way. Sorry. So, okay, quick break. I'm videoing outside. I'm videoing outside because my son is sleeping upstairs and I do not want to disturb him. And this is the only time I have to video. So I want to, so if it's noisy, I'm so sorry. I am in my patio making this video. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, we were talking about the first paragraph. The first paragraph should introduce who you are. Um, I want to say, tell a short story of who you are, of what inspires you, of what motivates you. Just in general, um, don't make it too long. Remember, this is one paragraph. So just a short, quick anecdote of maybe an experience or things that, something that motivates you. So you want to connect who you are to the course of study you're interested in. Okay, so this is your first paragraph. Short, sweet, you want to draw in whoever is reading your statement of purpose. Tell, introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your background. Um, so if you're in Nigeria, for example, talk about you being from Nigeria. Um, you can talk about Nigeria is poor, all that stuff. Feel free to do that. Um, and then you want to connect that to the course of study. So don't forget that. Don't make your pe first paragraph just about yourself. You want to make sure that every paragraph connects back to your course of study, to why you're even writing a statement of purpose at all. Um, does this make sense? Let me know in the comments. Um, all right, so first paragraph, who you are. Second paragraph, you want to go into detail about your academic and technical interests, okay? So for me, for example, Whenever I um, was writing my statement of purpose, I'm very interested in women's health. I'm very interested in black women's health. I'm very interested in um, um, chronic disease prevention, chronic diseases like cancer and diabetes, right? So that, so my second paragraph now is going to focus heavily on these, um, these interests, okay? So for you, your second paragraph, after talking about yourself and your motivations and and like how that connects to your course of study. Now you talk about 
technical interests like what really interests you um, in um, what really interests you um, and why you're interested in these things okay so this is what your second paragraph should be about okay so all right so your third paragraph should connect your academic and technical interests to your future goals okay so you want to make sure that all of your interests that you've blabbed about in the second paragraph you want to make sure that in your third paragraph you talk about your your future academic goals academic goals so so if by future i mean that your future in the department you're ta you're applying to you know you can say oh you know so for me for example if i were writing this i would say oh well you know i'm interested in um black women's health in the united states i'm interested in immigrant health in the united states um i see myself working with doctor this 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 who has also done such research okay so you want to make sure that in your third paragraph you connect your interest that you've talked about in your second paragraph you connect that interest to your future academic goals and part of your future academic goals include prospective advisors pers prospective professors okay so for example you want to make sure that wherever you're going there's a professor there doing research that you are interested in okay so that's very important so you want to um you want to research professors currently working on stuff you're interested in and then include them in your statement of purpose guys if there's anything you take away from this conversation is that you want to include professors research professors if i whenever i'm reading a statement of purpose and i'm like and i see my name in the statement of purpose like oh i would like to work with dr muda um on blah 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 my heart is like oh wow yeah tell me more tell me more hmm, interesting you know because it shows two things it shows that they have done their research and they know they're smart people and number two that they're actually really serious about this stuff okay so so include professors names in the part in the department that are doing stuff you're interested in okay is this is this good so far okay if this is good subscribe and give this a thumbs up okay give this video a thumbs up when you give this video a thumbs up youtube says oh this is a good video let's show more people and that helps my channel grow so give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe all right so your fourth paragraph you want to connect your future academic goals that you've talked about in your third paragraph you want to connect that to your short and long-term goals after you graduate so you want to talk about what you want to do five years after graduation that's very good because any professor any admissions committee reading your statement of purpose is going to be like oh interesting this candidate is thinking long term this person is talking about five years from now ten years from now hell yeah wow interesting you know so you want to include that you want to make sure your fourth paragraph is about the future like the future after graduation so your third paragraph is the future from where you are now like your future in the program your fourth paragraph is the future after the program after you graduate and so you're um so you can talk about you know possibly curing um creating a cure for coronavirus which is has made all of us quarantined right now but you want to talk about those things like the future your big dreams your big goals you know you want to entice the professors right because who doesn't want a student who is ambitious like i want a student who's ambitious you know um, I don't know, I tweeted about one of my students who is pretty much a millionaire right now and, and she she's my student and I'm so proud of her, right? She's very ambitious and I love that. So so you want to make sure that the admissions committee sees you, like you come across as ambitious to the admissions committee and that's great. That's great for you. Okay, so your fifth paragraph should conclude. You, sh you want to start to conclude, you want to... Um, I, I call this anticipatory thanks. So you're saying thanks in anticipation. I look forward to, you know, being admitted into your prestigious program. So this is the paragraph where you where you like praise the program. You praise the, the school as a whole. You you praise the city. So that's something a lot of people forget, right? So you wanna you 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 should remember that your school is in a city right so if you're applying to university of texas right 
you're applying to U University of Texas. University of Texas, um, the main campus is in Austin, Texas. So you want to talk about the city of Austin, how you look forward um, to Austin. You want to maybe research the weather in Austin and talk about like, oh, I look forward to being, um, to becoming part of, you know, the community in Austin and giving, you know, so you want to talk about the city at large, right? So you talk about the department, the school, the city, the school is in. And that just, you just come across as so knowledgeable and so, so um, hardworking, right? Because it shows that you've done your research and that's, you, you, you can buy that, right? So that's really, really important. Okay, so a statement of purpose is all about fit, okay? It's all about fit. When I was a graduate, um, coordinator um, and I had to look through several several applications it was all about fit for me like when I read a student's application I always thought hmm, would put this student fit with this graduate student master's PhD student fit in our university um, is this a good fit for us you know um, so that that's something I always always thought about right so I want you guys to remember that it is about what fit do you fit so your statement of purpose needs to needs to um, convince convince the committee, the graduate committee, that you fit into their program, that what they what the school what the program is offering is best for you. Like there's nowhere else you can go except that school, and that um, is going to help a ton. All right. So the last thing now is that you want to edit vigorously. Edit your work. No. <laughs> absolutely no typos no grammatical errors please okay you want to make sure your work is edited to the gods okay edit 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 like crazy so that you're so that because imagine imagine like for me when i'm trying to decide on who gets into the graduate program and i see i read a statement of purpose that has so many grammatical errors what does it tell me? It tells me one, the student, this prospective student is so lazy because really you couldn't edit your work. Come on, come on now. Two, what does it tell me? It, told, it tells me that this student is careless because maybe you edited, but you missed some stuff, right? Three, it tells me that you're not ready for graduate school and I don't want you, okay? So you wanna make sure that your statement of purpose is beautifully edited. Ask someone else to read your read it and make edits. In fact, invest in a professional editor. Ask someone professional, maybe somebody who read English or something, to read over your work and provide edits for you. And that is going to be your that's going to be your it make a break for you because if you if you submit a statement of purpose that has so many errors, nobody's going to people are going to look down on you and look down on your application, even if you have a first class. Nobody cares, really, honestly. This is me now telling you guys because I've been I've been there. I've, I've I've made decisions on who gets into graduate school or not. And I'm telling you, try not to submit a statement of purpose that is not compelling and full of grammatical errors. It does you don't look good doing that. Do you see how passionate I am talking about this because because I've seen some students who I felt were had good prospects, but their statement of purpose was just full of errors full of so many errors that I felt like this is not a good candidate this is not a good student if they can't fix errors if they can't edit their work I don't want them because that says so much about who you are as a person okay and um, I hope you took notes and I will catch you back in the next video bye bye